What's up, brother? What's up, brother? How we doing? Oh, I'm good. Yeah, let's go, baby. Let's fire it up. It's Purim. It's yeah. Purim. Cabra, let's fire it up. Let's just go right there with it. Um, to get everyone. Oh, we're just gonna open the 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 circle. So we're on Sicha Dalin. We're on part four of Sicha Dalin. We're in the last part. And here, oh, yeah, oh, great to see him. Rav Nachman says that his grandfather, Rav Nachman Horodenker, and by the way, for the Chaber who are joining, it's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll understand just a little bit of what we're, we're, what's going on. And by understanding the part, you're in essence understanding the whole. So my grandfather of Nachman Horodenker of blessed memory once spoke on the verse, long life is in the right hand and in her left wealth and honor. So the Talmud asked if this means that the right hand of the Torah can provide only long life, but not wealth and honor. It answers that since it can provide long life and certainly it can provide wealth and honor. But what did Rav Nachman's grandfather say? However, let's bear with it. My grandfather explained that by logic and inference from the verse, those who have long life should also have wealth and honor. It would make sense, right? Someone lives until 100 years old. What do you think about the guy? Maybe you thought, if Farkhani is thinking, maybe he ate a uh, base protein diet his whole life. But for others, for a lot of people, he had, he had wealth, a lot of money, big houses, good security, good health care, the whole thing. So it is fitting that the righteous should have wealth because we look at the righteous people in, in our lives, the holy Jews, and we're like, wait, those people should have wealth. Why is it that they are they are so holy in our eyes, but you know they they don't have money seemingly, while the rich wealth people, you know, the wealthy people in this world, um, or the big, uh, what do they call them? Um, the big, uh, the hedge fund managers. Yeah, okay, let's say the hedge, hedge fund men. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. <laughs> well, all right. Kids sir, Rabbi Nachman says, but in actuality, they do not have it. Those Sadiqim that we view as holy don't have that wealth and honor when it comes to this world, right? Like the money, you know, the, the apartments, the cars, the Lamborghinis, the Hyundai Odysseys. We know Farkhani is in right now. The son of Rufan, Honda Odysseys. <laughs> Odysseys. It's a beautiful thing. So I had a realization today, Chavra, that I think over the past like couple of months, I've been drifting away. I don't know about you guys, but from the Torah of the Baal Shem Tov. Not drifting away in a sense where I'm, chas I'm forgetting. Although there's a story about the Baal Shem Tov forgetting everything he knew, and then he started with all of these. It's a Gavaldic story. But the Baal Shem Tov's Hasidus and his teachings are are engraved, are infused in every single um, utterance we have in this world. Amash. But I realized today, being at work during Purim, that it all comes down to the Baal Shem Tov Kadosh. All comes down to the sweet Torah. The Torah believing in every single Jew. Believing in our shlichus in this world. That wherever we are, it's exactly where Hashem deployed us. How cool is that perspective? Imagine having that perspective on life. right? We mamish find ourselves in the middle of Tel Aviv on a Purim day. And we could be so many other places. And Hashem chooses to deploy us dafka there. Dafka there. But we really have to believe it. The Baal Shem Tov tells us to believe it. When I got to work today... And we'll get to the Baal Shem Tov Torah in a minute. When I got to work today, I had a whole plan. I'm going to get all the Chavra who were in work, who were supposed to work today, to have a pseudo with me. Mamish for 40 minutes. And I told the Rebona Shalom, look, Rebona Shalom, I'm not going to be in the community, but I'm going to be in my work for 40 minutes. You know, during lunch, and we'll have a pseudo then. It'll be Gavadika time. 
in those 40 minutes, mamish is everything. So I get to work and I had all these plans that I made last week and no one was at work. Mamish, no one. Not a soul. <laughs> Not a soul. Not even Mia. Not even Mia. And I was just like, what's going on? Ribona Shailam, this is like crazy. I got the Bishlach Man already. I had the Rome jersey. Guys, the Gavaldi. Avi Watson, ask me where my God is. Rome, he's in Rome. <laughs> That's the costume. It's so good. Gets me every time. I love it. I don't. I don't even know. I could be making it up that it's a Gemara. I think I saw it once. I was. I was like running to get a costume. I literally was unprepared for perm. And yesterday, I'm like, wait, what should I dress up as? But it's the easiest thing to just throw on a jersey, right? I'm like, wait, there's actually a little bit more going on with my jersey that I have, the only jersey that I have in Israel. The Gemara says, I think, I think it's a Gemara, but we should check this out for real. Um, the Gemara says, if someone were to ask you where your God is, you're supposed to respond, my God is found in Rome. Mamish in the darkest of places, in the places where it seems like he's devoid, devoid of all light. You're supposed to say the darkest place. I think at the time, Romans, Jews, the whole thing. So anyways, here I was with my jersey ready to be put on, and no one was there. Comes along this Yidala, this little Yidala, comes to work, and it was Mamish the highest experience in the world. We spent perm together the whole day today, and she opened up her heart. We opened up our hearts. It was a beautiful thing, and um, it was just a fun day overall. But I, I really just, like, it brought me back to the best teaching uh, cover that every single Jew, ourselves included, ourselves included, we feel like we're so distant. We feel like we're so not suitable. We're not suitable to say one bracha. We're not suitable to love uh, Yidin for even a moment. We're not suitable to utter one letter of tefillah. But the Besh is saying, no, 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 no. However, we have to believe that we are. Gamata, that was the Torah of the Besh. Gamata, also you. You thought you were so far, but also you. Also you could actually bring Mashiach. Also you, the simpletons. The simpletons will be uh, bring Mashiach. So with that, we are going to open up or we're going to end with the Baal Shem Tov um, Torah on money because we just went through money over the past couple of days when it comes to Rabbi Nachman's teaching. So we just know from tonight that Rabbi Nachman says that it may seem like the Sadiqim that we hold in such a high regard will have the wealth. They should have like the biggest houses in, in Muncie, the, so on and so forth. But really the people who aren't, quote-unquote, Sadiqim, have the wealth and honor in this world. It's a, it's a, it's v'na <laughs> fochu. It's perm, mamish perm. So uh, the Baal Shem Tov says like this, Yaakov had a dream, and we'll end with this, and then we'll open it up. Yaakov had a dream, a ladder was set on the ground, and its top reached to the sky, and the angels of Hashem were going up and down on the ladder. Ruts of the shove, up and down, up and down. In Hebrew, the gematria, this is a crazy gematria, Chavra. In Hebrew, the gematria for the word for ladder, which is sulam, is 136, which is the same word for money, mamon. Wow, what a Torah. Chavra, I did not know this existed. Mamon, money, is the same gematria as ladder. Crazy chiddush by the Baal Shem Tov. Such is the nature of money, says the Baal Shem Tov. Similar to the ladder, money can elevate you or bring you down. Sometimes finances lower a person to the depths of the netherworld, of the Sheol, of the Sheol. And sometimes it raises ones to the highest heights of heaven. It all depends on how we use it. So when we're concluding this Torah, just for now, until we open it next, which will be very, very soon, we should be zoka to use money in the correct way. We should use money as a way, as a chariot, to reveal the Elokus in this world. It's nothing but a chariot. Nothing but a chariot to bring goodness to this world, to bring goodness to ourselves, to bring goodness to our families, our friends, and everything around us, and just positive health, all the good things that we want in this world, um, uh, money should enable. And uh, from here on out, until May, best stream for all of us, and we should just remember that today, Purim, is a very opportune time to pray. So even when we feel like we don't 
we're not suitable to even pray one word, but we feel like we can't open up our mouths. We feel like we're mamish in quicksand when it comes to our prayers. We feel like we're at the end. And I'm speaking to myself, mamish. I told someone today, it's so hard to pray. It's so hard to pray because everyone says like the ikr is praying, but it's so hard to pray. I know the ikr is praying, but it's so hard to pray. So even mamish, when we feel like we're in quicksand, when we, when we feel like we're at the, the depths, we're in the mud, we can't, we can't even utter one word. That not uttering a word is the deepest prayer. That cryerless cry is the deepest cry, says the Kutzker. So we should be Zoha to believe in that as well. So uh, questions, comments, please feel free. Fire it up, perm. If Step, I got a dip, but you're a beast. Thank you so much, Achi, for coming, stealing Torah, stealing time, stealing life, the good life. Baruch Hashem. Avi, I'll see you around at a wedding, hopefully. Baruch Hashem. Amen. Peace. Guys, uh, are there questions, comments before we go? And if not, not having anything to say is also good. I yeah. love it. I Also, I was literally just talking about, I was like, oh, I wish sometimes that I had more money and I could use it to get different things that I want. But then what you were just even saying reminded me of this old story I once heard of like, I won't tell the whole story because I don't remember it exactly. But the punchline is about like this guy who was like, I want, I just want to be like this. Uh, he was like a really wealthy man and like donated to a lot of places and was really successful. And like he told his kids, like, I don't care what you do, like where you bury me when I die, but I want to be buried in my specific socks. And have you heard this story before? I like, I feel like I... There's I, probably many versions of it, but like, it was it was like, no matter what, like, needs to be buried in his socks. And then like, when he died, his kids didn't know what to do because they promised him like, they, he would bury him in his socks. And like, the punchline is like, no matter what, like, doesn't really matter whether he's buried in his socks or not because in judaism we don't look at it about like the material and what you do only in this world but also like what you do really matters in your mido and it's not all in the physical so i think it's a really beautiful reminder that you brought today of like it's important also to use it for good and where you can bring yourself and it's not all about just the physical what we have amen so good the socks it's all about the socks. <laughs> yeah, it's a powerful story. I heard it when I was it's little. Powerful. Like, oh, yeah, it's, it's a good powerful. story. I have to reread that story. It is a really good story. Wow. Yeah, it's a good one. Fire. What a connection. Thank you so much. Fox Fire it up. Thank you for coming on. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.